Hello, I'm senior reporter Pam Zubek, and this is a special edition of the 6035. Today, we have the pleasure of hosting Mayor John Southers, who will wrap up his second term in early June and hand off the reins to a new mayor to be elected at the April city election. We ask Mayor Southers not to reveal who he is endorsing, if anyone, but figure he has a lot of knowledge to share with voters after running the city for nearly eight years, and perhaps some advice for the candidates seeking to succeed him. First off, can you give us your public service resume in 50 to 100 words or less? Wow, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a little difficult. When I got a law, out of law school, University of Colorado, I graduated in 1977. I started as a deputy district attorney. A couple years later, was promoted to uh, chief deputy DA in charge of the economic crime division. I then left to go into private practice, spent a total uh, of 10 years in private practice, a firm that's still here in town. Uh, and then uh, at that point in time, uh, uh, ran for uh, a, a district attorney and was elected and served two terms as the uh, district attorney for the 4th Judicial District. Uh, at uh, the conclusion of that, I returned to private practice briefly and then was appointed uh, by uh, Governor Owens to be the director of the Colorado Department of Corrections, which was happened to be based in the in Colorado Springs. I did that for about three years and then uh, was uh, appointed by uh, President Bush as the United States Attorney for uh, Colorado. Did that for four years and at that point in time uh, Ken Salazar, the acting attorney or the Attorney General at the time, had been uh, elected to the United States Senate and Governor Owens had to uh, appoint someone to fill his term as Attorney General. Uh, I uh, did that, was uh, confirmed by the Senate, and then was elected uh, Attorney General in 2006 and 2010, so I uh, spent a total of 10 years as Colorado Attorney General. And then in uh, uh, 2015, I had a, a moment of uh, delusion and uh, <laughs> chose to run for mayor of Colorado Springs, and anytime you stick your neck out, you may get elected. And I've had the pleasure of serving as uh, mayor for the last ten, uh, eight years. And the community has had the pleasure of you serving. Uh, it's been a real um, wonderful opportunity for political leadership. I'm, I have no regrets about my decision. It's kind of an unusual move to run for mayor from a statewide office. Uh, I'm really glad I did. What do you feel are the chief issues in this campaign of in the city election and why are they important? Well, what what the various candidates' uh, uh, priorities are. Um, obviously, I'm a little biased. Uh, my priority was to get us back on track infrastructure-wise. And I know that having lived in Colorado Springs all my life, we have a tendency to ebb and flow on our infrastructure investment. And I'm hoping that candidates will recognize that that's not a healthy thing to do. You have to uh, have a very consistent effort to keep up with critical public infrastructure like roads, stormwater, things like that. Uh, I hope that uh, people will have the same uh, uh, emphasis on job creation. Uh, obviously, the city doesn't create jobs, but creates an environment that attracts jobs. Uh, I also hope that there'll be the same emphasis on a collaborative relationship with the uh, uh, council. We've made a, a lot of progress. The first uh, strong mayor, um, it was a pretty uh, dysfunctional relationship. We've worked very hard. You know, we don't all get along on every issue and stuff like that, but it's been a pretty functional relationship. That's harder than it looks, and I'm hoping the next mayor will uh, make sure they work hard at that. Well, when you say the infrastructure issue is a big one, um, uh, anyone who's lived here for any period of time realizes that you had a huge challenge with that um, and were able to uh, persuade voters to approve not only the stormwater fee but also the road tax and and actually um, having the legal background that you do it was fortunate for citizens because you were able to get us out of that big federal lawsuit in the process and of course those both of those uh, fees taxes will sunset at some point in time um, so that was I, I understand very difficult but what do you think the toughest part uh, of running the city has been for you? Uh, I think that was somewhat the toughest part. Uh, what you have to when when you're mayor, 
you have access to information that the average citizen does not have, and you determine you know what the city needs. First poll we took in 2015, only 15 percent of the voters thought that stormwater was a major issue. We just lost a stormwater election. Well, I'm sitting there at my desk, and I've got the three lawsuits uh, that aren't going to go well uh, because we had had a serious uh, decline in our uh, investment when we when the voters did away with a stormwater fee. So it's my job as a political leader to convince the voters that they ought to want something that they don't naturally want. <laughs> and that's, that's the toughest part of being mayor, uh, convincing the citizens why they ought to want something and then showing them uh, how they get it. Mm -hmm. What skills are important, do you feel, um, in your opinion, for a municipal chief executive? Um, you don't have to be a genius, but you have to be smart enough to understand um, uh, some, you know, pretty uh, sophisticated nuances um, about uh, the law, you know, Tabor, uh, land use, things like that. You, you know, you have to be a pretty good student and, and be able to understand some nuanced concepts. Uh, you... Uh, one of the most important background things I had is managing large organizations. People ask me, "What was the, you know, what was the best experience you had to prepare you for being mayor?" Everybody expects me to say, "Oh, you know, I ran uh, AG's office with 375 lawyers." No, best experience I had was running the Colorado Department of Corrections. Had 6,000 employees. Had a 500 million dollar budget. Um, I had factories, farms. I had you know, you know, all kinds of stuff. I had water rights issues, uh, had health care, had education, all that sort of thing. Uh, that sort of management of a large organization uh, was incredibly valuable experience to me. And I wish, uh, uh, I think it was very important uh, experience. Well, speaking of uh, large numbers of employees and such, um, uh, the first strong mayor that we had under the charter change that was approved by voters in 2010, um, the first strong mayor was elected the following year, 2011. Um, we saw a political novice take the office of mayor and wipe out hundreds of years of institutional memory and experience represented by department heads and others um, that were shown the door. What is your hope for the existing staff? under the new mayor, or is that even important? Well, yeah, it's important, but I hope that they'll, uh, the, the new mayor has every right, uh, he or she, to uh, make their own decisions about who they want running the departments. I understand that. I made a few changes. Um, uh, I credit, uh, frankly, um, uh, Mayor Bach. Uh, uh, he, he was a non-bureaucratic guy. Uh, I think that was part of his problem. He'd never dealt with a bureaucracy, and uh, bureaucracies are bureaucracies whether you want them to be bureaucracies or not. They're large organizations, and you have to deal with that. Uh, but I, I credit him with uh, you know, trying to be as efficient as he possibly could. Um, uh, I've, I've got a pretty good team, but I'll in the transition period, I'll be very uh, frank uh, with uh, the new mayor about what I see as the – uh, issues in the various departments. Uh, believe, uh, I'm, we're already working on the transition. Uh, the mayor will get a notebook on every single department with all the uh, issues in that department and you know uh, things like that. And they'll have to make their own decisions. But um, I have confidence that there's a lot of good people in the city. And unless we have someone with a new sheriff in town complex, uh, a lot of them will stick around. So that brings me to this question, which is, um, why is this mayoral election important, and um, and why is the council election important, too, or is it as important as the mayor's election? Uh, they're both important. Every election's important, uh, but this year you've got uh, four new council people out of council of nine. That's a big difference. That can shift the thinking of the, of the council pretty dramatically. Uh, you know, you've had the uh, same mayor for eight years. You're going to have a new mayor uh, who's going to uh, – a strong mayor form of government allows the mayor to come in with a an, an agenda that they run on and say, gee, if you elect me, you'll do this. 
And, you know, if you go back uh, and look at my political ads in 2015, I told you I was going to do, and nobody should have been surprised. Mm -hmm. And I hope that's kind of what we see here. Everybody says, if you elect me, this is what my priorities are going to be. And, and frankly, that's what I think is the strength of the strong mayor system. The voters get an idea, well, this is what this person thinks are the most important uh, things to do. Um, so, you know, uh, that's very, very important. Uh, I think they're both important, uh, but you want a chief executive that's going to run a 39th largest city in the country. Uh, they need to know what it's all about. And it's a, tif a difficult job. It is a difficult job. Um, I feel like in some sense maybe I've looked made it look a little too easy it's not it's not an easy job mm -hmm. well another aspect of this election coming up is that it's possible that it could be the city's last april election given the lawsuit that's pending yeah it there's there's a uh, there's a, a lawsuit that's pending it's interestingly enough I find it fascinating that they sued Cower Springs and not Denver, mm -hmm. who just moved from a May to an April election. <laughs> uh, and I think it has a lot to do with uh, if Democrats are in control, they don't care about when the election is. Mm -hmm. But if Republicans are, then they care mm -hmm. when the election mm -hmm. is. That's my sense of things. Even though we have nonpartisan uh, officials. Yeah, serving but everybody city. knows what party yes, the of candidates course. are in. Um, so just to complete that thought for listeners, there's a, a group of – Voting groups, uh, um, people who advocate for um, free and fair elections that have sued the city uh, with the intent of forcing the city election onto the November ballot, contending that there is a better turnout at November elections of people of color than there are at the April city election. So that's what that's about. Um, so we were talking about um, issues a little bit ago, and given that there has been um, significant or at least vocal opposition to the retool COS comprehensive plan. Um, and some people wonder if your su successor, whoever that might be, could reopen the debate on that and perhaps amendment, amend it in some way. What are your thoughts on that? Well, certainly they could do that. They could reopen anything they wanted to. Uh, but the fact of the matter is this is a process that, you know, this is not something that John Southers dictated. The world has changed. Uh, uh, you know, development, uh, hopefully we've, uh, we're successfully moving away from, you know, uh, hundreds and hundreds of acres of uh, homes without any commercial activity. And uh, that's just the way the world's developing. A lot of planned unit development and things like that. And this is an attempt uh, to uh, bring, you know, our codes and things like that up to date to what's actually happening uh, in the world. That's going to continue. That process is going to continue no matter who's uh, mayor. And I really don't uh, – uh, I feel like that's really been driven primarily by the, the community. I mean, uh, this was never something that I said, oh, this is my view of what urban development ought to look like. Uh, so – uh, I think it's going to be an ongoing process regardless of when it's, you know, formally enacted. So there could be tweaks ahead. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, since you're going to be leaving us soon from the mayor's chair, um, everyone is wa wondering what will be your next act. And I'm wondering if you can share anything with us on that. Yeah, I can share you what I've got in mind. Um, uh uh, I'm through with elective politics. Um, I've I've been in the arena for uh, 35 years in elective and uh, appointed office, uh, and um, that's enough. Uh, I think my analytical skills are really good, but uh, uh, I'm not as quick on my feet. I've uh, lost some of the verbal acumen, things like that, and it's time to get out of uh, elective public office. Uh, I'm uh, just got elected chairman of the Daniels Fund, a very large uh, foundation, Colorado, about one point seven billion dollars. Uh, under IRS regs, I haven't been able to be paid as mayor. It's actually a pretty good paying gig when I step down as mayor. Uh, I uh, hope to have at least one profit board uh, to be on, one nonprofit board, one profit board, and then 
I think the likelihood is I'll wind up affiliating with a law firm. I don't want to go back and be a courtroom litigator, but I have a lot of experience uh, uh, in, you know, how things work and in uh, uh, government relations, all that sort of thing. And so I think that's probably likelihood. My only goal is to, uh, I, I'm not the retiring type, but I do want to have more time for travel. It's really tough as mayor to get away for more than 10 days. My wife and I love international traveling, so I think we'd like to take a couple international trips a year and do some domestic traveling. So that's my, that's, I want to design a, uh, several gigs around uh, getting in more traveling. So the Daniels Fund is based in Denver, yes? Uh, yeah, but it's four states. It's, uh, and I'm chairman, not executive director. Okay. Okay, I don't run it on a day-to-day basis. Oh, okay, so you, won't, you wouldn't be the executive. No. Okay, I'm I see. The, yeah, I'm the chairman of the board. Uh, you know, uh, four meetings, telephone conference every week, mm-hmm. the four meetings a year, things like that. Uh, go to a lot of uh, functions that I'm required to go to. Um, but, uh, you know, they, that's uh, Wyoming, Colorado, uh, New Mexico, and Utah, which were the four states that Bill Daniels did business in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, the only thing I would uh, say at this point is just to open the door for you to make any kind of relay any experiences you've had or make any comments about the service that you've done for the community as mayor or in another role and, you know, just end it any way you would like to. Uh, I said at the beginning that I'm really glad that I made somewhat of an unusual uh, move to go from uh, attorney general, state attorney general, to mayor of Colorado Springs. Uh, I didn't think that was not something I thought about, contemplated until – we got pretty close to that election. I'd seen what had happened. You know, this is my hometown. I've lived here all my life. I was a little distressed. In fact, we weren't moving forward confronting some of the critical issues we needed to confront. Um, and I just, uh, I'm very, very appreciative of the uh, opportunity to serve as mayor of my hometown. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience. There's some things I won't miss about it. There's a lot of things I will miss about it. Uh, and, you know, um, I've got a book. I'm writing a biography, a autobiography. It'll be about in June. And oh, cool. I think the thing that people find the most they didn't know about me was I have a very interesting personal story. I was born out of wedlock, adopted as an infant. My adoptive parents died when I was young. I, through an amazing set of circumstances that will be talked about in this book, I learned the identity of my natural mother when I was 39 years old. She didn't want to have any contact. She had a six kids and a husband that didn't know I existed. Uh, believe it or not, I have 11 half-brothers and sisters that didn't know I, any of them knew I existed until a year ago. Oh, my goodness. And so I'm now in contact with four of them. And so that's, uh, that's the first two chapters. And uh, the editor that uh, reviewed the book uh, said, uh, gee, I was fascinated by the uh, first two chapters, but then we got into all that uh, legal junk, and uh, <laughs> it's not nearly as fascinating. So, But I think most people will understand the, the last chapter about uh, mayor and things like that. So uh, I, uh, what I want to say is that, you know, when I was 15 and lost my father, I, I kind of uh, decided right then and there my goal in life was to lead a life uh, that had some consequence. And as I look back, uh, you know, I'll be 72 in October, next October. Thanks to the people of Colorado, people of Colorado Springs, um, I've had the opportunity to live the life I intended to live. And not everybody gets to say that. What's your, the title of your book? That's interesting. Uh, uh, the, the title is um, Out of uh, the First Speech... Uh, given at the founding of the city of Cairo Springs. Uh, All this I saw, and part of it I was. General Cameron, when they drove the stake in on July 31st, 1871, gave amazingly prophetic words about what Cairo Springs would become. And at the end of it, he said, all of you here today can look back in decades to come and say, all this I saw, and part of it I was. And I just thought, hey, that's kind of how I feel mm-hmm. about it as I look back. Uh, I was very privileged to be involved. Uh, you know, I talk a lot about some of the, you know, I got to argue a case in the Supreme Court. 
I got to be in some of the most uh, uh, interesting criminal cases that you'll recognize uh, from your past. And, uh, you know, I was uh, right there in the front row uh, and some pretty big deals. And so uh, uh, I've, I've been very, very fortunate and I'm very appreciative of uh, the citizens of Colorado Springs, El Paso County, and Colorado for giving me those opportunities. And I'm sure the community is going to be very appreciative that you are willing to put that down into a book. To, uh, to... Yeah, I don't expect it to be a, be- a bestseller by any means. <laughs> I start out uh, in the uh, forward by saying, l- you know, l- let me put this out straight away. I'm not a very flamboyant guy. <laughs> so if you're looking for scandal, this is this is not your book. It's it's a tell all by a really boring guy. So don't expect the tell all to be very interesting. There's a few tidbits about a couple of governors that people may find interesting. Okay. Thanks for the preview. Yeah. And thanks for joining us here today. I'm glad um, to be with you. Yeah, and we'll see um what happens in April and go from there. Well, let me make a bold prediction. Okay. I won't be out of office till the uh, uh, first week in June. I mm-hmm. think with, what, 10,000 candidates for mayor, it's pretty clear that <gasps> we'll have a runoff. Oh, right, yeah. right. That's true. I, I, did, yeah. I did overlook that. Okay. Yeah. Very mu- uh, thank you very much for being with us today. You bet. Okay. The 60 30.